My name is Mike Stanton. I'm Build America Mutual's Head of Strategy and Communications. And today, this session is going to tackle the municipal bond market in light of the volatility we've seen in the first half of this year. Joining me today are Nuveen Portfolio Manager Patrick Marr and Deputy Director of the New York City Mayor's Office of Management and Budget, David Womack. Before we start, I'd like to remind everyone that we want to hear from you. Please use the text chat to the right of your screen to post questions and engage in the discussion. We'll incorporate as many of those questions into the conversation today. And also a reminder that there is a poll question also on that right hand uh, panel. Please answer the question in the poll tab if you haven't done so already, and we will bring that into our conversation as well. So let's get into it. Uh, Patrick, as we said, uh, it has been a really volatile uh, first half of the market, um, particularly surprising for some investors who view the muni market as, as sometimes the most boring part of their portfolio. Can you walk us through what rising interest rates did to muni bond returns so far and what people are seeing as, as they look at their statements? Sure. Well, so far we've seen about 190 basis point or so rise across the uh, the municipal AAA yield curve throughout the year. Um, this has, depending on the duration and maturity of the bonds that you're invested in, um, led to a, a return, a negative return of anywhere from three to 15 percent on the year. Uh, this is obviously something that's been quite more uh, more negative than most clients are used to seeing on a year in and year out basis, uh, especially given the direction of rates over the past several decades. Um, we found that uh, over the course of the year, uh, in addition to the, the rate moves uh, in, in not surprising as we've seen this in, per in past periods, uh, but the volatility in markets often creates an outflow cycle within the municipal space um, and additional selling pressure that's, uh, that's moved municipal rates um, in a kind of a even more negative direction. Uh, it's, as I say, been a, a very impactful uh, uh, aspect of client portfolios this, this thus far year to date. Uh, but one of the kind of silver linings, if you can go there, has been the, the stand up in credit quality. Um, we've really seen that as a um, as a reflection of the different investment grade buckets. Uh, AAA, AA, single A have all had similar returns on the year, uh, indicating that this is not necessarily a, uh, a credit induced sell off, much more of a rate sensitivity, uh, similar to what we're seeing in, in broad, high quality fixed income uh, across the market space. Thanks. And so as talking about high credit quality issuers, that's a great segue into David. Uh, New York City, uh, year in, year out, is one of the largest borrowers in the marketplace. And you were selling bonds on a fairly large transaction during the month of May when we saw kind of a, a peak, or at least a short term peak in interest rates, and they fell uh, fairly significantly. Can you take us through kind of a mini case study of how that transaction went? What kinds of questions were you getting from investors? And, and were there any new faces? Were there different kinds of buyers as you went to the market? Thanks for the question, Michael. It was a very interesting marketing as you, market. As you know, New York is one of the largest borrowers, issuers in the municipal market. And we come periodically throughout the year. We don't have a lot of flexibility. We can move transactions around, delay if we need to. But we, we do need to be in the market. We do need to borrow. So as we approached our May transaction, we saw interest rates rising uh, quite dramatically. And that was a, uh, something we had to navigate in structuring the transactions. And we did see a, a different, somewhat different mix of buyers. We typically have a mix of bond funds, bank portfolios, insurance companies, SMA investors, and trading accounts. In this particular transaction, the trading accounts sort of took the lead. As Patrick noted, there was significant selling pressure from the bond funds that put a lot of pressure on our on the market and in our transaction. There was also very strong interest on the retail end, direct retail SMA investors, um, particularly were active in the front end, you know, 10 years and in. Um, so seeing that diff, but the yeah, the selling pressure from the bond funds uh, made spreads widen and we had to uh, really not scramble, but it took a little bit to put that transaction together. And we expect that volatility to continue. So, so Patrick, you know, you are closest to the SMA business, the separately managed account business, and, and probably closer to some of the retail investors. Let's take a step back uh, and just what, what kinds of, what are they looking for from their municipal bond investments, uh, particularly in this market, um, and have 
they had uh, have they changed their priorities at all as a result of the market volatility? Yeah, I think uh, through anecdotally, through kind of conversations, not just this year, but really over prior periods as well, uh, we continue to find that most investors, especially in the SMA space, uh, continue to be highly focused, obviously, on the tax uh, tax exempt or tax advantage nature of munis, uh, not just at the, the federal level, but obviously state and local where applicable as well, uh, but also high quality. Uh, people somewhat forget that uh, municipals tend to be very high quality at, at an aggregate level with about 70 plus percent of the market uh, being what we would consider to be high investment grade quality. Uh, consider that to maybe the corporate market, which might be, might be more like 50 plus percent in the triple B range. And you get that, as you pointed out earlier in, in, the, in the call, uh, a very core, st somewhat stable, except in volatile interest rate environments, um, the portion of your portfolio that you can rely on for that tax advantage uh, income. And as credit quality moves forward, you know, so one of the things that, that has boosted credit quality so far this year is this, you know, somewhat unprecedented federal spending through the CARES Act and the ARPA bill um, that provided uh, direct cash financing to states and local governments. Um, how are people that, that I think the last ARPA checks are moving out right now. So how are people looking forward to the next 12 or 18 months is, is as far as credit quality goes, what's the expectation going forward? Yeah, it's it's certainly in part because of federal stimulus over the course of the past couple of years, even though those programs are uh, in the process of winding down with funds need to, needing to be spent in the not too distant future. Uh, but really, I think that the one larger buoy for, for most municipalities, especially in the higher quality space, has been an increase in, in just kind of your standard or, or normal revenues. If you think about where most municipalities collect their uh, the majority of their revenue stream from, property taxes at the local level, income and, sa income and sales tax more at the state level, all of those have been at, at considerable highs for running periods now. Uh, I think the, the resilience that we expected to see from the market in terms of credit quality dating back two years, not only came through, but really grew um, as those revenue buckets grew as well. Uh, at the same time, municipalities have done a very good job of keeping in check their expenditures. Um, we, we note that through all of the upgrades we've seen, very few upgrades have been pointing towards uh, the receival of federal stimulus as the reason why they're being upgraded. It's much more about managing their expenses, managing their debt load, uh, putting away money into rainy day and stabilization funds that will allow those municipalities to weather the next storm uh, when that comes. But to, to follow on your question, uh, we see credit quality, especially at the state and local level, continue to improve or at least be stable for most credits. Uh, over the course of the next year and a half, two years. Yeah, I, would, point in, yeah, I would actually echo Patrick's comments, at least in our direct case. Um, as you're aware, uh, Fitch upgraded our outlook from stable to positive for our last sale. And we certainly benefited from strong tax receipts through uh, following the, the federal money, uh, certainly bridged may have a gap through the pandemic, but the tax revenues remain strong and stronger than we expected. And um, and we expect, we hope that, that expect that credit quality to continue and we'll continue to, man, you know, to manage our, you know, our expenses and our, uh, our fund, fund streams as we go forward. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just throw in BAM's perspective before, before I move on. So Build America Mutual, we, we guarantee the debts for about 5,800 communities uh, nationwide. A lot of them are smaller uh, and medium-sized issuers in, in, across the country, in rural areas in particular. And in a lot of those places, when we do our credit analysis, one of the things we look at is just the, the depth of the economy. Because, you know, if, if one or two employers is impacted, that can have a real uh, significant uh, implication for the the ability to repay. And one of the things we found in this particular recession, which is kind of different than others uh, tied to COVID, was that those smaller communities in a lot of places were the ones that saw the greatest uh, tax revenue growth because, you know, some people relocated out of the cities, but by and large, the economic activity in those communities was stable or up uh, versus uh, the rest of the country. So it was a, a little bit of a, a different kind of a recession from what we've experienced historically, but, but very strong across the muni market. The other lesson I think a lot of people learned was just how uh, robust the muni market is from a structural perspective. Uh, most uh, issuers have debt service reserve funds and cash on hand so that they can withstand 
temporary interruptions in economic activity and still uh, have a long-term stability. So that was a, an important takeaway and something that, that we're watching as, as new transactions are structured going forward, making sure that that, uh, that structural robustness uh, stays in the marketplace. Um, before we go, I'm going to go off script here for a second, David, because we did get a question from the audience in, the, in our question uh, poll. Uh, it's about the new issue marketplace and issuers selling uh, new issues. And the question is, you know, there are retail order periods and opportunities for individual investors who are more focused on buy and hold to get involved. Um, what are, are those working well? Are there things that can be done differently to increase that kind of participation? I assume as an issuer, you want uh, those buyers in your uh, investor base. Uh, we do. And they've actually worked uh, pretty effectively for us. Um, and I think they've worked effectively for, for many issues. For many issuers, um, what we have seen over over several years now is a shift from is a decided shift from direct retail to SMAs, and that actually followed um, as I'm sure you're aware, Michael, as the bond insurers had difficulty you know, coming out of 2008 2009. Um, individual investors were buying a lot of insured paper, and as they went away, uh, the SMAs stepped into the breach and to help their their clients navigate. Uh, the invisible market because there are several, you know, several different types of issuers, different credits, and it's hard for an individual to understand, you know, all of the different credits we have. But retail has been an active uh, participant for us and for many large issuers, and we've had great success with those um, with retail order periods. Um, and because the you know, many institutions are different parts of the yield curve, it, it actually has worked out. But we try to um, do our allocations so that you know, institutions have access to um, in a wide variety of maturities and structures. Um, but we, we encourage retail investors. They're, they're a, still a solid part of the investor base for municipal bonds, you know, whether in a new issue market or in the secondary. So we want to encourage that. Are you looking at technology at all to, to find easier on ramps for them? I think as as we go forward, um, you know, there may there may be, um, you know, it's a you know, the municipal market is a very unique unique one, and we will uh, we will adapt as the as the technology adapts. But um, it's important for us to get all we need all pockets of demand. There's there are none that we can we can shut off effectively, especially given you know the amount of the amount of debt that we expect to issue, and um, you know, we want investors to uh, to be comfortable in buying our bonds. So again, great segue. Um, you know, one thing that I think people don't appreciate is that historically, uh, about seventy percent of all of the public infrastructure investment in schools, water and sewer system, roads across the country is actually raised in the municipal bond market. You know, we've for now decades have heard people in Washington talk about the federal role in infrastructure and trying to boost that. Um, but over that time, the bread and butter was done in the municipal bond market. Now, uh, the federal government has taken a fairly substantial uh, act with the IIJA, and, and that money is starting to flow out. Um, how do you think? How do you think that will impact the municipal market? Is is that going to be less net borrowing going forward because the federal government is making these grants, or or how do you think that plays out? Um, from I'll take it from an issuer perspective, and the way the the Infrastructure Act is uh, is put together. Those funds tend to have uh, are flowing through the states, and then the states you know have to allocate them to localities and you know to municipalities and counties. Um, there are there's a lot of there's money available for water and sewer. There's significant money available for for transportation, and they and many of them are competitive grants. And so you know our uh, the various agencies in the city that use those monies are actively preparing their their applications. Um, in New York City's case, if they're water, you know, if they're water related, you know, those projects will be funded. You know, we fund that through our separate water finance authority. And so, to the extent that we can get federal money available and to offset some of the uh, the bonds that we might do, that would be helpful. Um, but you know, it remains to be seen how much of that flows directly down to the, you know, when it gets to us, when it gets to the city level. But certainly, we'll be taking advantage of every opportunity we can. And I was just reading a, a program. It was, it was one of the more obscure programs, but there's a, a railroad grade crossing elimination uh, uh, subsidy program inside the, the bill. And that requires local communities that are trying to finance those projects to put up 20% of the money 
on their own in order to to gain the rest of the money from the federal grant. So, you know, historically, I think there, there's been a lot of municipal bond activity where people sell bonds to raise money in the new issue market to, to do the matching funds that allow them to unlock other grants. So with more activity, that, that could also uh, up, drive an uptick. Patrick at, at Nuveen, do you have a, an opinion on the outlook for kind of new money supplied? Is that is that something you're expecting? Uh, we've seen, and I think that it kind of varies per participant in the market, we've seen estimates that continue to be high on the year, even though we've been uh, moderately trailing last year's pace. I think obviously that will depend very much so on the, the course of rates in the, the near term and really as we get into the fall where we tend to see another uptick in issuance. Um, our kind of read on the credit research side has been that uh, issuers have deferred somewhat as they, um, as, as was pointed out by David, that as they kind of find out what their uh, their inflow from federal stimulus will be going forward. Uh, but I think that, uh, as you point out, there's there's a continued need for borrowing. Uh, we'll continue to see major uh, major issuers coming to the market um, in various size. Uh, that you know the, the rate market is going to determine whether or not we see that come as continued tax exempt or or more of a taxable flavor like we've seen over the past few years, which. Um, it has simmered down somewhat uh, in recent months. So uh, I, I don't have an exact number for you, but, but I think that we're always um, we're always in the ballpark uh, when it comes to to the actual long term estimate for what the year's supply will be. Thanks. So uh, we're, we're coming uh, down. I want DJ. I want to take a look at the poll before we wrap up the session. I looked over there, and, and uh, not everyone in the session has voted in the poll. But as as the political analysts say, I think I've seen enough. Um, uh, we had three options. How have clients reacted to the volatility in the market? Buy, sell, or hold. 10% uh, bought, 10% sold, and 82% uh, said they held and, and stayed the course. Again, Patrick, that kind of reflects some of the, the feedback we got, and, and David, you got from the individual investors in the SMA business or the direct owners that they were in this for the longer haul and were buy and sold, sell investors. Um, and as we talk, the, the held percentage is even increasing right now. Uh, does anything about that surprise you, uh, gentlemen, as, as we see the uh, remotes result? Uh, well, I think given the the magnitude of flows that we've seen so far, we've certainly or outflows from mutual funds and, and SMA complexes. We've certainly seen some selling, but I think when you consider the the aggregate base and the overall size of the market, it, it really has been uh, somewhat of a, a marginal or incremental selling pressure. Um, I, I think that the the held portion gives me the idea that, um, as you point out, a lot of individual investors are long-term oriented in their nature. Um, and as the flows continue to move towards managed money, as opposed to the traditional transactional brokerage um, style of account, um, that's where we're going to try to be active. But obviously, the, flu the, the account still um, stays intact uh, in terms of the overall size of the portfolio. Great. So I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, for every seller, there is a, you know, there is a buyer. And if the bond funds are selling, that probably means that SMAs and retail um, bank portfolios, you know, more longer term, you know, buy and hold type investors are buying. Um, and that's the, you know, the off ramp, if you will, to the, um, to the, the bond funds. You, know, you also have the trading accounts and so on and so forth, providing liquidity in the market. So while the bond funds may be you know, selling and that puts that puts upward pressure on rates and upward pressure on on spread on you know, trading spreads. Um, but there are still buyers out there that are, you know, and we're thankful there are still buyers out there that believe in this market, believe in the, cre the strong credit story. And um, and we continue to think it it has been a traditionally very safe market. So, so Patrick, uh, you know, bringing it into the home stretch, if you want to leave the audience with a few takeaways as far as, you know, how they approach the municipal bond market, what offer, what advice would you offer advisors right now? And, and I'm going to ask you to work in one of the questions from the chat pane, which is, you know, what do you see as the largest risks from muni bonds uh, in the market today? Sure. Well, I mean, I'll take that up front. I think that obviously what we've seen so far this year, uh, the rate volatility poses the, the, the most near term risk, uh, but it also presents, I think, the, the longest term opportunity as well. Uh, as we as we look at the, the market and so many other market participants have noted, uh, your long run returns, your three, five, seven year and longer type of returns are most closely associated with the yield that you're buying bonds at. So given that we're, like I said earlier, uh, nearly 200 basis points higher in yield than we were just to start the year, 
I think for a lot of long-term investors that have been looking at uh, a better opportunity to allocate cash than we had seen really over the past year or so when, when rates had dipped in that 1% environment, um, this most might pose an opportunity. Uh, my other point, and I think that this is an ongoing conversation that we've been having as, um, as we talk to clients over the years, is that investors, especially those with the means to be uh, have a larger presence in the market, continue to benefit from a diversified approach. Um, a core portion of your portfolio that can be um, of individual bonds that can be augmented or complemented by uh, various different uh, approaches, wrappers, mutual funds, closed-end funds, ETFs, that can more narrowly uh, define or more, more closely uh, refine uh, your overall duration and uh, credit exposure within the, your, your portfolio and your overall municipal allocation. That is one of our go-to phrases around here. When you've seen one muni bond, you've seen one muni bond. Uh, <laughs> that the uh, the revenue streams across this market can be very diverse. There are a lot of bonds, uh, general obligation bonds, anchored in the the local community and the local property tax base. But then there are also a lot of exceptions to those rules, and and uh, it can be idiosyncratic risks that require some some uh, transaction level uh, research. Uh, David, any last points before we uh, wrap up? Uh, I would only you know, say that the municipal market in you know, in general again has been a very uh, strong credit market uh, strong uh, market for fixed income investors um, as rates have moved higher it you know should be even more attractive to investors as a as a long term as a long term um, longer term investment hold uh, we're encouraged by the uh, the variety of participants that are you know that are still that are buying in this market and you know as rates move higher you know perhaps their you know patrick but you know volume may be m more muted as you know refinancing refunding transactions you know become more challenging but um municipal municipalities still you know do need to borrow and you know we will be around for a long time um we are you know, solid credits and we rely on investor participation we encourage their participation we encourage questions and um and that's i will leave you there well thank you both so much for joining us uh today uh we really appreciate the time and your insights <laughs>